Thank you for coming. And um, as always, the videos will be available um, on Friday, and the lecture slides will also be available online. And um, if you haven't joined our seminar mailing list already, please do so in the corner back there. Thanks so much. So with my great pleasure to uh, introduce our guest speaker uh, today, uh, Professor Antonio Facchetti. And uh, he actually obtained his degree, all his degree, in Milan, uh, University of Milan. And in 2002, he, uh, he joined Northwestern University, where he currently an adjunct professor of chemistry. And he also a co-founder and currently the Chief Scientific Officer of Poliera Corporation. So some of you uh, are, are working organic semiconductor, you know uh, Poliera. And uh, he also actually won a numerous award. And a number of us here also use some of, uh, of the material developed by Poliera and 2200, for example. Uh, so I named it a few uh, big prize. For example, he received the 2009 Italian Chemical Society, uh, Society Research Prize. And then he also re received the Team Tech X Printed Electronic Euro 2010 award. And then he also, uh, in 2010, was uh, elected at uh, Cavalry Fellow. And the uh, 2013, he uh, was selected as the fellow of the Material Research Society. And so the list go on, but I will not take more time. I'd rather uh, give him the time to present today. So please join me to welcome uh, Antonio. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much. It's really a great pleasure to be here. Thank you again, Ken, for your kind invitation. And today I'm going to give you a little flavor of what we do in the field of uh, optoelectronics, which is quite broad. And I'm going to give you a little flavor of the things we do at, at Polyera and uh, some of the results which are publicly, uh, pu we publicly publish uh, as a Northwestern University as well. Um, uh, the outline is quite long. I'm, I'm going to start with a brief introduction about Polyera and a sum the summary about uh, uh, the research activities uh, we have done at, uh, or in organic transistors. Uh, this is going to be a very brief uh, uh, summary of what we have done. And then most of the, uh, the talk is going to be uh, related on the work we do on organic solar cell, looking at, uh, give you a flavor about some of the donor material we have, uh, we have developed, starting from a small molecule and uh, going down to try to stabilize the morphology uh, of these blends. Uh, looking at uh, old polymer blends, for, uh, again for OPV, look at the effect of the blend morphology and the variation of the donor. Uh, look at a little bit about chemistry. Uh, it's been quite challenging to synthesize some of these polymers, so I look at some chemistry, how to make them using different routes. And then at the last part, if I have enough time, I'm going to show you some uh, latest result about using metal oxide alloy as an interlayer to enhance uh, charging extraction from the, from the OPVs. Um, a brief summary about Polyera, obviously you know about Northwestern, but the company was started in 2005 and our, our major effort has been on, uh, on the organic transistor area and then it started in 2008 we moved on OPV activities and more recently in a, a work on metal um, material based on metal oxide and, 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 and OLED type of uh, materials. Uh, we have three facilities. One is in Skokie, where we do uh, all the chemistry and materials development. Uh, one in Taiwan, where we do formulation, process engineering, and customer support. And the third facility, which opened just a few months uh, ago uh, in San Francisco, where we do actually product design and, and uh, integration and uh, really try to in invent a new product based on the materials we, we have developed. Uh, right now we have uh, 85 employees uh, and most of them are in the R&D and these are some of the funding we, we, we the major funding we, we received. And the, the mission of the company is really to develop uh, materials. This has been uh, our traditional uh, mission. But more recently also we are really designing the product to drive the, to drive the, 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 the utilization of these materials. Uh, and then uh, what kind of the application we have been looking for? Uh, looking at our uh, mobile wearables and, uh, and circuitry for Internet of, Internet of Things. So uh, these are the products we are actually designing in San Francisco. And uh, to do that, we need uh, um, the, tr the transistor. 
uh, as a backplane or as a base for the circuit. We've done a, some, of, some work in this area, both on the chemistry, developing materials as a semiconductor and the dielectric, looking at some charge transport, charge injection, and, uh, and looking at trapping at this interface, uh, and also looking at different architecture, uh, how to fabricate these type of devices. Um, uh, the core uh, my expertise, I'm, I'm an organic chemist as by training. Uh, so for me, it's been quite fun to think about the new building blocks to, to put together. Uh, uh, these are some of the latest we have, we have, we have, we have, we have developed based on this body pie or this uh, alkoxy TVT systems uh, or this uh, uh, TNO type of coronin type of structures. I'm not going to talk about this today, but I just want to give you a flavor of what, what we do, what can we do with this material. Uh, we can put uh, uh, the semiconductor, the dielectric, the passivation, uh, surface modifier, all on plastic, and we can get transistor which perform quite nicely, you know. Uh, uh, what is the competitor in this technology? Uh, is amorphous silicon. So we are looking at mobility on the order of between 0.2 to 0.8. Uh, so these organic transistors can reproducibly achieve this type of mobilities. Uh, they can uh, be deposited over a very large area. And we look at that, uh, what is called bias stress uh, or stress experiments at uh, room temperature or at different or higher temperature. And all are comparable to stabilized amorphous silicon. So this really gives confidence that these materials can, can, are good enough. Uh, we also look at the topology of the, of, the, of the semiconductor and we have developed a, a, a machine which can really analyze all the topology to make sure the grain boundary distribution is, is homogeneous throughout the wafer or, or the substrate. And then when we have uh, all of these things, we can put them together. Uh, these are some prototyping we do in Taiwan. Uh, and these are typically, if we use for a backplane, uh, for example, for this type of displays, uh, typically, there is uh, between uh, one or two million transistors. For this particular prototype, there is about half a million of organic transistors. And then they have all worked together in, 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 you know, in, in, good, in concert. And uh, we can laminate, uh, uh, you know, for example, a front plane. And then this can be work all together. And uh, you know, this is an ex example of things we could, we could do based on the big plane technology uh, b using organic semiconductors. So these are good enough. Uh, if you want to make circuits, we don't only need uh, uh, a type of polarity or transistor. You need both polarities because CMOS complementary circuits are more robust. Uh, so this is something we, we have developed. Uh, these are actually gravure printed uh, uh, transistors which can be put it together. And then we can, make, we can make circuits based on this. Uh, and there is a company in, in Europe that is for which we have been working uh, to try to, uh, for example, make uh, uh, simple, very simple circuits based on very few transistors which can monitor temperature or monitor very, very, uh, very, very, uh, analyze very, very small things. So it needs very, very simple circuits. The only thing I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to just give you a flavor about some of the results we have uh, been looking at recently in, in the organic semiconductors. For those of you who are familiar, the N2200 uh, is, a, is a polymer that, which has this type of structure, something we developed a few years back. It's quite a nice electron conductor. We can gravure print it, but the best uh, architecture is typically is a top gate architecture where the source and drain are, are gold. Okay? Gold has been traditionally the best electron injection uh, metal for these N type semiconductors. But we want to do this by gravure printing. So recently, we have been moving from an architecture which is based on gold from an architecture which you, you want to use PDOT PSS. But we really thought that PDOT could never really effectively inject electrons in this type of polymer. Uh, this turned out actually to be uh, untrue. Uh, we can actually, uh, we made uh, uh, these printed circuits where PDOT PSS, initially, we functionalized the surface of PDOT PSS using this uh, amine type of uh, polyamine type of structure to modify the work function to, with the hope to have electron injection. But it turns out we don't need that. Uh, also, if we don't have any uh, 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 functionalization of the P dot, we can, can get quite nice uh, device characteristics. We see a little contact resistance here, but quite uh, decent uh, uh, IV characteristics. So this actually opened the opportunity to uh, explore different type of P dot where the pH can be varied. and. Uh, uh, we, and, and we can have uh, quite nice uh, IV characteristics again here with uh, quite decent mobility between uh, point 0.1 to in, in, linear, uh, in linear parts of the plot or to uh, from point 0.1 to about point 0.3 uh, 
uh, centimeter square volt per second. So now we have a, a method really to inject electrons into, into P dots and then we can combine with typical uh, a P type uh, uh, a semiconductor for which whole injection from P dot can occur quite efficiently and make a circuits which are all based on polymers on a plastic substrate using, uh, using all polymers. And we, we demonstrate a simple ring oscillator or different type of uh, D-latch type of um, uh, circuitry. So um, this is the only thing I want to talk about uh, uh, organic transistor. Um, moving to the OPV, uh, actually we have been quite focused on uh, <coughs> developing the material for transistors. So as a company, we decided to span out our activity in the OPV area into a new company for which we, we own it, uh, the majority of the stocks, uh, which is called Ray Energy. And this, Ray en this company is based in Taiwan as the same model in terms of uh, thinking. So we want to provide materials, but also we have a twist where also we want to really leverage on the um, uh, in, is it existing infrastructure, which is uh, um, used for traditional um, um, electronic fabrications to build OPV. I cannot disclose the detail of this, but the, the, the model is really to provide the material and try to enable uh, existing infrastructure to build uh, uh, modules. Uh, and it, so these are some examples of, uh, of, of the products we have uh, been proposed. There is others that I, 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 we, I cannot disclose. But, uh, you know, PC, uh, stable PC on the order of 5 and 6 percent would be sufficient to really enable quite interesting products. So again, here we are based to uh, looking at the TFT, uh, the, the organic uh, photovoltaic arch architecture. Uh, again, here uh, we have done work on looking at uh, chemistry of the, uh, of the uh, a photoactive layer, and I re uh, so looking at this type of chemistry, look at, at, at interfaces, uh, look at the donor, looking at the acceptor, and I really want to thank uh, uh, the, the, the collaborators which are highlighted here in, in, in red. Um, you know, really thanks to them. Most of the study has been done, been done in collaboration with, uh, with, with these people. And I want to just give you a, a quick flavor of uh, all the different uh, uh, things we have done in this, in this area. Uh, so starting from, from the donors, uh, we initially work, started working on molecular materials. That was a few years, few years back, where we look at, for example, very small variation in the, in the chemistry of the functionalization. And really, this changed a lot, a lot where how these molecules pack in the solid states. The presence of this double bond really helped help the, the, the pi pi stacking of the, of the, of the molecule and help the uh, to, to, to get a higher mobility, a whole mobility in this particular case. We also look at the effect of the shape. There is really wonderful uh, work done by Ron Kali, for example, where he looks at different building blocks uh, and different shapes. And his conclusion was branch type of structure gives higher efficiency compared to the linear one, which it somehow is contrary to intu intuitive for what we know in terms of charge transport. However, his approach was to use as a connector different units which will change profoundly the electronic structure of the, of the molecule. In this study, we use exactly the same building blocks, and the result is the linear are much better than the mono branch or the di branch, which follow the, 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 the transport characteristic of, of this type of molecules. Uh, we, of course, we look at a donor acceptor type of, 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 of motif, uh, and also for this one, we look at uh, some chemistry to, to couple this, this, the, this unit. Uh, so this was a sort of this starting point a few years back. Uh, an example of molecule we, we show recently, uh, uh, we look at uh, this, this uh, different donor acceptor based on D DPP and this uh, band type, uh, benzodiethylphene type of structure. And uh, we look at uh, different substituents here, and these are uh, uh, TM images of, of three different uh, uh, films which have been processed from, from chloroform. And, uh, 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 basically, the, the, the morphology is actually completely independent of the substitution. You just need to add a little bit of the I.O. and completely you change completely the microstructure and, uh, and the efficiency also changes dramatically. Basically, without, the, uh, without additive, the, the efficiency is completely independent of the substitution. When you add a little bit of the I.O., the efficiency changes dramatically with the substitution and the best efficiency corresponds to the nice, this type of nice uh, interdigitated domains. Um, we'll also look at, at, at polymeric donors, and it was a little bit a twist, uh, you know, uh, now, of course, is well known, but when we started in 2008, uh, obviously, we were want to make a donor material, so we want to have a good hole conductors. At the same time, you have to have, want to have a homo energy as low as possible to enhance the, the VOC. 
So th you had to really think about how to match these two uh, different, uh, different uh, effects. And one way we, we look at, uh, we only publish very, very small amount of this work, is uh, to build into the polymer chain some of uh, these, uh, these building blocks. And of course, there's been wonderful work from, from Santa Barbara as well, uh, to really ha have a control of the, of the energetics at the same time enhance the pi pi stacking and the interaction between the different polymer, polymer chains. Um, uh, probably one of the uh, most successful polymer we have, we have published uh, are based on this, uh, uh, this uh, type of, uh, you can see here, quite electro uh, strong electron accepting uh, functionalities uh, copolymerized with uh, a three, tyof uh, three, t, uh, three t thiophene units. From, and by using basically this type of approach, we can uh, get uh, uh, ce uh, cells which has quite uh, a decent VOC, you know, quite nice VOC on the order of 0 0.8, 0 0.85, uh, a very nice field factor approaching 80% and quite decent PCE uh, between 7 and 8%. And uh, we try to understand a little bit better why we achieved quite such a nice, particularly the, the field factor was quite uh, unusual for such a high efficiency cell. And we try to rationalize really looking at not only at the domain size, which is, uh, become, is quite nice you know, on the order of 50 nanometer for the donor and the acceptor, but also what we, we observe a very nice phase gradation where the, the PCBM sink at the bottom interface, clearly seen by this TM image, close to the uh, uh, electron extracting zinc oxide layer, whereas the polymer raises on top of the, of the film. Um, so nice domain size, nice phase gradation, and also the, morph the, 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 the polymer donor have a so-called face-on orientation, which really helps the, uh, the, uh, the transport in the, in the diode direction. So the combination of basically all these three factors were somehow at the origin, we believe, at this high uh, field factor for, for, for these cells. Uh, what we've done more recently was to basically starting from a, a, this type two, two polymer with the 3T, we expanded the series and we, we thought maybe we can find a better candidate. Obviously, it is not the case. The first polymer you make are always the, are always the best. So uh, the answer are, are we didn't find any, any polymer which performs better. But what, what, what is quite interesting is uh, these are the, uh, the PT, uh, uh, TB, TPD. So this type of building blocks, the other one is the, uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, the, the blue one are the BTI, so this type of building block. And one, two means one thiophene, two thiophene. These are the three different thiophenes because they have different um, radiochemistry. So the, the, the chains are out, are in, or are within the central thiophene unit. And then we have the, we have, we have the four thiophenes. And we see for the inverted architecture, again, the, the efficiency increases when we go to the 3T with the, the chain out, pointing out uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the donor unit. And then the efficiency really uh, de decreases dramatically for the other type of radiochemistry. And the, for the 4T is a little better. And this is true not only for using this building block, but when I use the BTI, we see exactly the same trends. What is also quite interesting, when we go to a conventional ar architecture, we also see a similar type of behavior, which uh, uh, it tells us that positive, and also the field factor are quite large. So probably what it tells us that in the case of the PSS, the phase gradation probably is occurs is opposite compared to uh, the inverted architecture where the PCBM sinks at the bottom. And in fact, what we discovered recently, if we use a conventional architecture where we use a metal oxide at the bottom, the efficiency for the 3T are much, much lower. And we know that the, basically the T3 sinks at the bottom uh, the, um, the PCBM sinks at the bottom, which has, is not the right gradation to extract uh, uh, electrons. And we can rationalize the trends for the different uh, radiochemistry, the different oligothiophene based on, you know, very looking at domain size, looking at uh, X-ray. We also did, did uh, some spectroscopy. Um, so one of the major problems, and let me go back one second to uh, this type of uh, 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 phase gradation. One of the major problems of this uh, uh, morphology is really not thermally stable. You take this cell, you anneal it at just at 100 degrees for 15, 20 minutes, and the efficiency decreases from about 50%. And uh, we really see this PCBM which start crystallizing and going on top. 
So this uh, morphology, which comes uh, without any design, is just fortuitous, uh, is, is, is not, unfortunately, is not stable. So one way we try to stabilize the morphology is uh, using some cross-linking chemistry use, uh, using this azide, which is a, is a known approach. But we really thought about an azide which could do a job specifically for PCBM or for fullerene, not for polymers. And uh, uh, basically what you need to do is have an azide which, first of all, is, is stable. It's stable enough in such a way that you can uh, uh, you heat it up or you and it doesn't decompose to form nitrine, which nitrine uh, will react with everything, okay? We react with the, uh, with the acceptor, we react with the polymer. But what we want is to heat it up mildly in such a way the uh, azide reacts specifically with uh, uh, fullerenes to form uh, uh, aziridine, to form a triazoline, and then uh, uh, in a second stage to post annealing to remove nitrogen and form aziridine. In this way, you can specifically cross-link PCBM without cross-linking the polymer, without damaging the polymer. And what is, we find in this type of bisazide is extremely stable. You see here we can anneal uh, this azide up to 160 degrees, and we see the two uh, melting and, uh, and, and crystallization and melting. Okay, So quite a stable uh, azide. So we can carry out this chemistry quite specifically. And then uh, we tested uh, different uh, polymer uh, do uh, acceptor blends. Uh, this is an example of uh, uh, efficiency uh, using different type of cross-linking content. It's not, it's, not, it's not so important. But uh, uh, what we can look at, for example, is the efficiency versus annealing. The red, if we, there is no any cross-link, this is for a P3HT-PCBM cell. And in case of the, the presence of the cross-linker, we have a stabilization of the efficiency. Without, there is no stabilization. And uh, this is clearly also looking at this optical image where we see crystallization of the, uh, the PCBM with, without any cross-linker. Instead, if there is cross-linker, you can anneal it at 150 degrees for uh, 122 hours. There is no any crystallization. So really a way to stabilize the morphology. Uh, Going a little bit about chemistry, I just want to show one example of polymer we developed actually a few years back as a, as an, as a donor. And uh, uh, the rationale was uh, uh, starting from uh, uh, the DPP type of polymer, which were shown to be quite a nice uh, hole conductors and uh, you know, showing quite promise for, uh, for, uh, for OPV as well. So one way to, I mean, the, the problem as polyera is this is a, there is a very strong BSF and SIBA patent on this, tech, in this chemistry. So our idea was basically to sweep uh, this uh, nitrogen carbonyl to form what we call isoDPP. So it's the isomeric uh, uh, structure of the, of the DPP. Uh, so before doing this, we did a lot of molecular orbital computation, both on, uh, on uh, isoDPP and DPP with uh, thiophene around it or, or without nothing, so just the, the core per se. And what the computation were telling us that uh, if this is the DPP without any, this is the, this uni without any substituent, and this is the isoDPP, we see a pinning of the LUMO but a deepening of the HOMO. This is also true in the case there is a thiophene, so we expect that is also true going into polymeric systems. So this is what the the computation were telling us. Also, the computation were telling us that the, uh, the, the core is, should be quite relatively planar, not as planar as the, as the DPP, but it should be, should be planar as well. So we starting, uh, we made the, the, the system, I skipped the chemistry, and uh, what the experimental results are telling us that uh, if you compare the blue uh, uh, with the red, we see that indeed the ISO DPP are uh, blue shifted, so the gap is indeed is much higher. Um, if we look at the uh, oxidation, again, it's much deeper in the case of the isoDPP. Indeed, the HOMO is much, is much deeper. Okay? So what we see from uh, experimental is, is, is in agreement with computation. What is true is, if you look at here, these are isoDPP uh, absorption. There is actually some uh, uh, tailing in, into the, into the, into the, um, uh, in, in the region which is similar to those of the DPP. Because this transition exists in isoDPP is forbidden by symmetry region. That's why we don't, that the extinction coefficient is so low. It is there, but we, we, don't, we don't see it. Um, we also look at the crystal structure. Uh, this is a crystal structure of an isoDPP derivative. These are DPP published by other groups. And you see here that the core is, is planar, so it's quite good. 
So we started making some polymer. These are uh, actually polymer that we have, we have published a few years back. Um, um, uh, these are results we have published. I uh, just want to point out that uh, uh, if you look at the VOC of uh, the blue versus the red, which are the basically the same polymer based on DPP uh, versus the red, which is the isoDPP, the VOC is larger, which it goes you know, in line with what we see from electrochemistry, also for the polymers and what we expected. The efficiency here are lower. Uh, we have other polymer, which I cannot disclose, the pi, uh, the donor unit, which gives quite, quite nice efficiency. So I, I believe this polymer can be quite, quite, quite interesting. Uh, at Polyer, we have been working for a few years on other polymers um, where we have we achieve quite nice, nice efficiency. We are on the order of uh, more, ten per, more than 10%, which has been certified a uh, few, few uh, I believe, six months or one year back. Um, a customer also, we achieve quite nice efficiency. So we are, we are, we are quite happy in terms of, of efficiency, but this is actually not the major, major concern. The major concern is how, how this polymer can be processed, uh, can be resynthesized, uh, are reproducible, are stable. And we are going into this direction. Uh, for example, uh, these are, uh, can be processed in ambient. Uh, these are examples of, uh, of, of blends, uh, which has an efficiency on the order of 8%, uh, which have been processed in, uh, in air or under nitrogen, and they give uh, uh, exactly the same IV characteristics. So this is encouraging. The cell have to be encapsulated, but the, the, the ink and the, spin, and the spin coating or the blade coating can be done in, in ambient condition. We also look at uh, light soaking uh, for, uh, for a representative cell. This cell, again, are on the order of 8%. Uh, here we are about 21,000 hours. Uh, it, the retention is on the order of uh, about 90%. So it's quite enc encouraging uh, results. And these are some examples of modules which has been produced not by us, by, by some customers. Um, let me now uh, switch gear about uh, some of the polymeric acceptor uh, or, or acceptor works we, we have done. Um, I apologize here, there is one problem with the view graph. But uh, um, we have been working on some of these systems, mostly through, through, through collaboration and looking at, uh, this is work done here, of course, in Santa Barbara, uh, looking at, for example, the effect of the regio regularity, how it affects the, the transport, but also the efficiency. This is it's been quite difficult, actually, to make this regio irregular polymer. It's very easy to make the regio regular, very difficult to make the regio irregular polymer uh, for the naphthalene. Um, uh, and so, and we also look at, uh, for example, the, how the miscibility of between the two different polymer uh, uh, compares and how it affects the, 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 the domain size. This is work with uh, Lin Lu. Um, and also, we are looking at different type of acceptors. But today, I want to just give you a little flavor how we, we, we started the work on polymer, polymer, polymer blends. Obviously, the motivation is, uh, you know, we, we had a very good, uh, you know, there has been quite nice results on this type of f using fullerene type of derivatives. Uh, actually, the field was open, as we know well, uh, lo mostly looking at this type of uh, uh, blends. Uh, the efficiency has been traditionally quite, quite, quite small. Uh, the way we started is actually from our transistor experiments. Uh, we thought we had a, a very nice uh, N channel. Uh, we, we look at that P3HT. Uh, we look at the complementarity into the absorption. This is quite complementary. Uh, uh, we started making transistor based on these blends. And uh, uh, what we see is you know, quite nice and bipolarity uh, with efficiency, uh, with um, uh, mobility on the order of 10 to the minus 3 for both hole and, and elections. Okay, so we start in blending these uh, two polymers together um, using the same solvent we used to fabricate the transistor, which were chlorobenzene or dichlorobenzene, and the efficiency was tremendously disappointing. Um, uh, we then use xylene instead of chlorobenzene and, or, or DCB. The efficiency starts increasing a little bit, and this really corresponds to a, a small uh, a variation in the in the, in, the, in the morphology of the film. What we know, and uh, we have a lot of evidence to support this, we know that if we use chlorobenzene or dichlorobenzene, we, we obtain complete stratification. Basically, the, P3, uh, the N2200 goes on top, the P3, P3HT sinks at the bottom. You have very nice in-plane you know, field effect mobility, but the whole the diode mobility is very, very, very low. And, very, uh, and of course, there is no 
area to, to, uh, to split the hexagons. Uh, when you go to xylene, you get a little better mixing, okay? So the efficiency increases a little bit. Uh, and then with the, through the work of uh, uh, collaboration with uh, Dr. Neher, uh, he actually tried different solvent and using chloronaphthalene, he found it was the best solvent to disaggregate the end-channel polymer. So by mixing, uh, we get a nicer, you know, finer morphology and which corresponds uh, efficiency, which are becoming a little more interesting. I mean, very low on the order of 1.4%, but again, very um, uh, better than we've shown before using chloronaphthalene. What we had done more recently is right to actually to put this experiment all together and try to rationalize efficiency and transport. And we look at, uh, at this blend uh, using, uh, you know, of course, solar cell, uh, using uh, electron and all, hole only devices and, lo and looking at field effect uh, uh, transistors uh, together. And, and we really see a, a quite nice complementarity uh, in the transport as a function of the type of solvent uh, which correlates very nicely with the morphology. Basically, when you use DCB, you get this stratification, very high field effect mobility, very small diode mobility, and very small efficiency. When you start getting a little better morphology, the field effect mobility decreases, the diode mobility increases, and the PC increases as well. So we see a quite nice, nice correlation. And the best efficiency, again, we are on the order of 1.3%, 1.4% well, when we use this couple. Uh, what we have, uh, Dr. Neher, done uh, more recently using uh, really a variety of techniques is, uh, is what is important is uh, not only the domain size per se, but also looking, looking how the, the polymer register uh, at, at the interface between the donor and the acceptor. You really have, to have a sort of continu continuity between the donor and the acceptor domain in the pi pi stacking to really help the, ex the splitting of the excitons. Okay, this is a recent work that he has done completely uh, and uh, uh, where we really find that uh, this type of domain uh, which are perpendicular are not as efficient although you have the same degree of phase separation compared to this type of uh, microstructure. Uh, what we have done more recently is exploring different type of donors. Okay, um, and one of the, the donors we have employed uh, recently is uh, using this PTB7, again mixing with the uh, N2200 as, as, as an acceptor. And what we see here that first of all we don't never see the stratification which we see in the case of P3HT. So that we always see some blending, no matter of the type of solvent we use. Again there is the best, uh, best solvent, we, in this particular case is uh, xylene, okay, which gives uh, uh, better performance on the order of 2.7% but we never see this type of stratification. However, we are still limited. And what we believe we are really limited by the, uh, the fact that for the, uh, for the, uh, for the donor, uh, when you go from a, 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 a diode based on the pure polymer in, 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 in to a diode based on the blend, you have a drastic reduction of the whole mobility, okay? The electron mobility going from the pristine polymer to the blend remains pretty high, especially in xylene, okay? But in the case of the donor, you have a drastic reduction of the whole mobility. And this is because uh, PTB7 is poorly crystalline, and when it's blend, it becomes even less crystalline. So it completely loses whole transport in the blend. So we really need to get a donor polymer which preserves this crystallinity in the blend. Um, and we, we find in, in, in this type of donor polymer based on this uh, nafto bis uh, uh, thiodiazole type of uh, functionality, this type of polymer. Uh, uh, this type of polymer, first of all, we can mix it, and if we use the right solvent, we get the domain size, uh, which we have been accessed using different technique on the order of 100 nanometer. They're still high, large, but they're good enough. Uh, the polymer remains quite crystalline, but also in the blend. And then uh, when we look at the mobility for the pure polymers and in the blends, the, uh, both the whole mobility and the electron mobility remains very comparable, and the efficiency start becoming more interesting on the order of 5%. So we are really going uh, to, 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 the right, to the right direction. Um, we are also polymer that behave much better, which we, I cannot disclose at this point, but you know, in this way, you know, we feel all pumped up to continue working on this area. Um, we, a few years back, we, we certified uh, on the order of 6.5%. Uh, uh, for this particular one, we are on the order of 7%. Uh, 
um, we, we are just slightly higher, 7% now. So these polymer-polymer blends can really achieve the, the efficiency closer to uh, C60, at least, uh, derivative. Um, I also want to briefly touch about some of the synthetic routes. And I want to go back to this polymer, because it's one we have been actually producing in quite large quantity. Uh, that people have been using for several type of several type of application. Uh, uh, traditionally, we make this polymer using uh, a steel type of coupling chemistry, which is actually extremely efficient. Works beautifully, as a matter of fact. Uh, we scale up this chemistry up to about uh, 250 gram with very good reproducibility in terms of electronic properties. Uh, uh, the big problem: you really produce a huge amount of tin, which has to be uh, it has to be discarded and it's to be processed. Uh, so one way we, we, we work is to replace, uh, uh, to, to not, not using tin. And, uh, uh, and this is mostly working with uh, uh, Dr. Kiri, where uh, he, he found that if you use highly activated zinc, it basically uh, form a, uh, uh, transfer an electron to, the, to, the, to this naphthalene diimide type of structure, which really activate the carbon bromine bond. And this then can be efficiently polymerized using nickel chemistry. Uh, we can make polymers, which gives quite comparable molecular weights. And then we can make devices, for example, transistor or solar cell, which have quite similar performance. So this is definitely a way to avoid the tin. Uh, more recently, uh, th the big problem when you use a nickel you are, uh, is not so such an active metal. So you really ca it's very difficult to have, to have very high molecular weight. So recently, we have been uh, using uh, palladium uh, to, to replace nickel. And we actually can tune the molecular weight over a very large dramatic, uh, dramatic range, we really get very, very long macromolecules. And with this one, we can um, uh, actually spin coat films, which are from a very, very diluted solution, make basically fibers, which are sub monolayers. Um, so, sorry, the fiber are on the monolayer thickness, but the coverage is sub monolayers. And we can get quite nice, uh, still nice, considerably device characteristics for s basically such a low coverage device. This is the nominal mobility not scaled by the actual coverage, the channel width of, the, of these devices. And uh, we can do, we can act this trick when you use the high molecular weight. When you go to lower molecular weight for very thin film, the film de wet. Basically, the polymer cannot retain the microstructure when you spin it. But definitely, this is a, uh, is a new entry that uh, actually we, where we can explore polymer-polymer blends with really a dramatically variation in the, in the, in the molecular weight. And uh, we could actually, since the solubility of the high molecular weight is very low, uh, we don't need a very soluble polymer. We can actually think to spin first this polymer and then spin the, the donor polymer and really study very, very thin devices and the, 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 uh, the splitting of the exciton for this type of very ultra thin films. I don't know how to do these experiments, but this is what I'm thinking. Um, another thing we have been doing is to, uh, th there is actually one product that we make using um, HEC type of chemistry, which again works quite well. Uh, the, 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 the problem is the, be the, the best solvents for this type of chemistry are typically quite toxic polar solvents. Okay, so an idea was to replace this solvent with a much more friendly solvent, such as gamma valerolactone, which is, bi is produced by biomass as a byproduct. So we look at that, uh, uh, first of all, our chemistry at, uh, at the monomer level to find the right condition in terms of the temperature, concentration, time. And then we apply this to, uh, as an example of polymerization to make a, uh, a, 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 a a TVT type, uh, type of structure. We make also TVT, um, but different type of um, uh, heck type of coupling reaction. This is a one example. Uh, and then we look at uh, a two parameter. First of all, um, for the polymer made using uh, NMP and uh, gamma valerolactone, we look at how much palladium it remains. And uh, there is actually much more uh, what is called is leaching of palladium. This is very typical when you use highly polar solvent. Uh, you have much less leaching of palladium when you use uh, gamma valerolactone compared to NMP. And then we look at also uh, efficiency and transport and are slightly smaller compared uh, uh, when you use gamma valerolactone compared to uh, NMP. 
but this is because the molecular weight of this polymer is still not optimized. It's lower compared to the one we achieve using conventional HEC chemistry. So right now we are uh, that we found the, the, the right uh, conditions we have to push to try to increase the molecular weight. OK, the last few minutes, I don't know how much time I have. Uh, yes, uh, last five minutes. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about some interfacial layer because you know, obviously work, great work has came out from here. Um, it, it's an area we have been working a, a few years. Um, uh, we actually look in the past two different chemistry uh, or approaches. One using actually self-assemble based on, uh, uh, in the first paper, and the second paper is not here, um, uh, w w where we use uh, basically a chemistry where we can self-assemble on a metal oxide surface using uh, um, uh, an exponential growth. So you don't deposit one layer at a time, which is typical in silane chemistry. But here, when you add to deep one, two, three times, you don't grow one, two, three layer, but you grow one, three, five, eight, much more. And this is because of the coordination that occurs. So we, we, this was our first, first approach to, for, to, to change the, the ITO energetics. And another way we did it is to use the uh, nanowires. And for example, here we use uh, perfluorocopper phthalocyanin nanowire to grow on, on the ITO and then to uh, deposit with zinc oxide to enhance the uh, charge extraction at, at the interface. Uh, however, today I just want to very briefly talk about uh, a quite new work using uh, metal oxide. And really the idea is to, um, uh, I mean, obviously, what is an ideal metal uh, interlayer? An ideal interlayer would be something where you can broadly change the, 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 the energetics, but you don't change the chemistry at all. Obviously, there is a wonderful way to change the energetics, uh, you know, using self-assembled monolayer, polyelectrolytes, uh, a, a different type of metal oxide on top of metal oxide. But there you have huge variation of the chemistry. Uh, and uh, we, we start in looking at this. Uh, by changing the, um, uh, by looking the ITO basically. We wanted to, uh, to uh, we look in the uh, electron extraction. And we look at the electron extraction because right now there is very uh, much more acceptors which have a different energetics. So the idea is can we find the right interlayer which match the energetics and is this important? So how can we do this? So w w the way we did it is basically to use a, a matrix oxide which we pick indium oxide and zinc tin oxide as a matrix, and then we use gallium oxide as a dopant. And if you expect that the, the conduction band is based on S orbital, and uh, we, you doped a heavy element with a light element, you expect a broadening of the band gap and a high rising of the conduction band and deepening of the valence band. So what, this is what is well known for, from, molecular, from computation on molecular, from computation on crystalline uh, oxide and what has been shown for some uh, selected metal, metal oxide. Uh, so uh, this is the, the idea. Uh, we, fabric we can fabricate this spin by spin coating and uh, annealing, which changes between 200 and 315, depending on the, of the, of the, of the, uh, the metrics. Uh, so th th this X-ray tells us that all the films, independently of the composition or the do dopant of the gallium, are, are amorphous. Uh, they are also quite smooth. Uh, we look at the different uh, techniques, it's combination of UPS, optical spectroscopy, uh, and uh, uh, low energy invert photoelectron spectroscopy. And we uh, experimentally measure uh, the energetics for the conduction and the valence band by changing the, the gallium, the gallium to content into indium oxide and into, gallium, uh, into zinc tin oxide. And uh, basically, we see a sort of continuum in the energy where we can, uh, basically, by interpolating the data, uh, now we can pick the energy of the, of the, of the, of the matrix or the interlayer by ch simply choosing the amount of, of gallium. So we can have a continuous in the energetic variation from about 4.6, 4.7 up to about 3.3, 3.4 by simply vary the gallium content into the two matrix. And be, this can be predicted a priori. For example, if I want an energetic on the order of 3.7, I can use 75% of gallium into indium oxide or 25% of gallium into zinc tin oxide. So in theory, this is true. I can use these two interlayer and I should be get better extraction for those composition of gallium. So this is what the theory. 
This is some of the experimental results. For example, here we use PTB7 and one acceptor, ICBA, with using the two composition. <coughs> so this is ICBA, three in the order of 3.7. Just look at the efficiency. You see here that in the case of gallium into indium oxide, the, uh, the, the efficiency maximizes on the order of 25% of gallium. In the case of the zinc tin oxide, it maximizes on the order of 75% of gallium. So basically, to plot the same results in a different way, if I, uh, the, the energy difference between the lumen of the acceptor and the conduction band of the oxide, uh, the maximization occurs when it's very close to zero, the difference. Uh, now let's use uh, PTB7 with different acceptors and using one matrix. So we use the one matrix, so we expect, since these different acceptors have different energetics, I would expect a maximization at different gallium content. And you see here that in the case of uh, this molecule, PDICN2, which has the lowest LUMO, uh, the maximization occurs at about 25% of gallium. For uh, the, the, the anti-polymer, it should occur on the order of, uh, um, sorry, is the ICBA, I'm mixing it up, the data. So yeah, so in the case of the NDI polymer, occurs on the order of 50% and the other one in the order of 75%. And this is also true if I use different donor and different acceptor. Basically, uh, the maximization in performance always occur where the, the energy difference between the, the LUMO and the conduction band of the oxide uh, really is very close to zero. So really, this tells us we have really a mean that based on the specific energetic of the new acceptor we are going to design, we can really simply pick up the gallium content and pin the energy of the interface. We also did a lot of work using UPS to study the electronic structure of this acceptor on top of the oxide. I don't have time to disclose that. So the very last view graphs is, is, is actually quite, quite important. Um, when we print the module, uh, actually it's, it's a beautiful, you can take uh, uh, their commercial available plastic with, coated by ITO, which actually are very good starting point. Uh, and you can flex this module quite efficiently. efficiently. The big problem is, uh, is not to to bend the, the, the module, which is, occurs quite e effectively and can be done quite effectively. The problem is by if you really want to make something that bends all the time, uh, if you coat a, a plastic with a polycrystalline oxide, such as ITO, you might start having cracking. Uh, so an ideal, actually, conductor would be something which has a quite high conductivity, but at the same time is amorphous, it's not polycrystalline. And again, uh, so in here we basically use uh, as the same strategy where we doped uh, ITO with zinc to make an amorphous phase. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, then we made cell based on this, uh, this amorphous oxide. I don't want to go into the detail because I don't have time. But basically the results, what is important result is here. If you take ITO and, and you start really bending it, you know, eventually you start forming cracks. Uh, because of the polycrystalline nature of the ITO. If you use instead an amorphous film, it becomes much more tolerant to, to this uh, multiple bending. And so we need to get cells which are quite stable upon really multiple bending. So with this one, I, I conclude. I, I hope I give you a little flavor about uh, polyera. Our mission re is in, in the display area and in circuitry. Uh, however, I show you that we found a new, this new company uh, which is really devoted to, to the OPV. We believe there is a market for that. I, re I really strongly believe that. Um, so I show you some example of uh, uh, donors. Uh, I show you the ISO DPP, I think, is a promising uh, building block to make quite interesting polymer. <coughs> um, we have some confidential donor with, with quite nice efficiency. <coughs> I show you some chemistry, how to make some of this polymer. Uh, using without tin or using uh, uh, HEC with different solvents. Um, uh, we found a good acceptor polymer, sorry, uh, we found a good donor polymer to combine with uh, uh, N2200 to achieve a, a dif decent efficiency. Uh, we can get actually 7% using polymer polymer blends. Uh, we can use this metal alloy strategy really to change the energetics of the interface, uh, which is quite versatile platform. And uh, amorphous TCO, as long as they have enough, enough conductivity, are actually a better choice compared to ITO to really flex uh, these, these modules. And I, I think I thank most of the people at the bottom 
these are some other of the some other people by all means are not all the people uh, that have been involved uh, but uh, with this one I, I thank you for your attention Yeah, well, actually, that's why I show it to you, to you guys, in a, uh, you know, um, in, a, in a section that I, I actually had this view graph, you know, the last minute. I don't have a very good explanation. Uh, we, we, what we are, what I would do now is to really look at the work function of uh, the the speed on when I put uh, the n-type polymer on top of the, uh, on top of it to see if there is formation of some dipole at the interface. Um, uh, I was surprised. I really, I, w I really was surprised. Uh, but we, it does inject quite efficiently. Um, both the p dot, which has higher work function, the more acidic p dot, and also the p dot with slightly lower work function, uh, the more neutral p dot. Uh, but they both uh, inject quite efficiently. Uh, we measured the contact resistance, and it is uh, comparable. Uh, the one with p dot without, uh, sorry, the, the one uh, uh, with P dot PSS and with P dot PSS plus the amine on top, the, the mobility is similar. The contact resistance uh, is, was a little higher in the case of the one without uh, amine on top of the P dot PSS, uh, but the field effect mobility and the evolution of the field effect mobility are quite similar, not at the low voltage, but in saturation are quite similar. <laughs> this, I mean, I, what I, the, 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 this was actually being obtained by two independent groups. Um, we, the first, uh, this was observed in Dresden, and uh, they wanted to publish the paper. I said, I think we should not publish a paper. I think I would like to study it more. I would like to understand it more. And I think we could publish it you know, in a different journal. But they really wanted to publish, and since they did 99% of the work, I didn't feel uh, I had, you know, uh, but then, you know, the group uh, Chironi at, uh, at IIT, they reproduced completely independently. They didn't know of the work. Uh, so this is what is the reality. And we made circuits, you know, uh, which really performed quite well. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what I'm curious now is to see if other N-type uh, uh, molecular uh, uh, poly uh, acceptor, sorry, N-type molecular um, uh, electron transporting material and, uh, and, and other anti polymer work uh, can work as well. I haven't had the time to do it, but uh, this is what we see. And uh, honestly, I thought that maybe, uh, maybe they use the amine to dope the part of the circuit. Maybe there is some vapor amine coming out and they transfer on the other, you know. Uh, so I, I asked them, you know, they said, no, no, these are completely separated experiments. But then when I saw the results from the Milan, those, they never use any amine. So um, clearly there is something else going on. To follow up on that, so you only see uses for the N-type transistor, right? Do you think it's also main work in the P-type transistor, also using the PSS? Yeah, yeah it, it works. Yeah. Yes, yes, we made the complementary. So Well, protons are also uh, present only at the interface, all on the source and drain. Then you have microns where there is nothing. So maybe if you just, also if you have some uh, protonation of the acceptor, but this uh, layer, this interface is very, very thin on the order of less than one nanometer, charges can be still, you know, by tunneling or can go through. And then you have transport through the, through the channel, which is micrometer away. Uh, uh, so actually, that's why I'm showing it this around, because I would love that someone would understand this a, a little better. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions <coughs> for the audience? So uh, most of the uh, uh, look at the tangent. So uh, if, you, if you look at uh, the lamp, tangent molecules, 
using a lump brain molecules. Which molecule, sorry? So, <coughs> so most of the molecules you, you have shown, shown us today are planar. planar. Yes. So uh, have you thought about using a lump brainer molecules? No. No planar. Um, actually, N to N two hundred, the polymer is not a very planar. We know from uh, IR spectroscopy, um, uh, we know from crystal structure of the unit that uh, actually between naphthalene diimide and the thiophene, the twist angle is on at least thirty-five degrees, also in the solid state. So it's quite quite twisted, but we get quite a nice uh, charge transfer band. You know, good uh, conductivity by you know interplane or within the chain from um, so uh, I n specifically I never made in purpose I mean I know the work here but I specifically I never made the twisted molecule uh, um, I'm trying to think about but I really in purpose I never made it um, Uh, no, no, these are all solution process. Are, by s you mean the interlayer, right? Interfacially. Yeah, those are all, you prepare the, the metal precursor composition in solution. You add the amount of gallium you want. You usually let it age for uh, an hour, something like this. And then you spin it and you anneal it. So that's in air, right? Yeah, this is in air. Sorry? Uh, n not really, not 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 really. It's not uh, most of these uh, 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 most of these TCO are sensitive to oxygen if you anneal them at very high te temperature. Uh, this uh, we we check obviously we anneal it to do to do the to do the composition of the of the, the precursor. Then you can post anneal it again, and there you can have some variation depending on the metal of the metal oxide composition. If you take indium oxide alone. Obviously, you spin it and then you anneal it, and if you can post baking it, you can have a variation of, of the conductivity. You lose oxygen in many cases. Uh, if you use gallium, a uh, gallium you know is a getter for oxygen, so you really stabilize the the um, uh, stabilize the, uh, the, uh, the the structure of, of, of the metal oxides. Um, so you, uh, I, we can we can talk about what we also check all the mobilities for this. By field effect, we check the diode mobility. Uh, uh, what is interesting, some of these TCO are very poorly conductive, uh, but they are quite efficient in extracting uh, electrons. Seems very independent on the conductivity, as a matter of fact. Believe it. Thank you.